One thing we associate with Joseph Stalin is ultimate power, and how he would stop at nothing to ensure that his authority over the Soviet Union was absolute. This resulted in a number of huge-scale executions and purges that took place to bring the population into line and to protect his position. Following the death of Lenin in 1924, the power within the Communist Party was unclear until Stalin would outmaneuver his political opponents and gain control of the party within a few years. His leadership was accepted, but as time went on, some elements of the party began to become slightly disillusioned with his leadership, following the failures of collectivisation and the limited effectiveness of his first five-year plan. This gave Stalin's rivals excuses to attempt to steer the party from Stalin's leadership. One way in which he tried to regain control was by authorising a huge and bloody purge of the population. This resulted in the deaths of his estimated over 1 million people within the Soviet Union. Today we look at the brutal execution of Stalin's Great Purge, and remember as always to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. As Stalin rose to power, many members of the Communist Party, some former Bolsheviks, began to doubt his authority and leadership. Stalin thought that anyone with ties to the government of Lenin and the Bolsheviks were a viable threat to his leadership and for this they needed to go. He wished to maintain absolute authority as a dictator, but also he wanted to enhance his leadership of the Communist Party, and also expel any dissent to his leadership. At the time it was likely he was looking at European politics, and that Stalin noticed the dictatorship that Adolf Hitler had quickly instilled into Nazi Germany. It's possible that he even admired the approach Hitler took, instilling a brutal police state and a culture where any dissent and opposition to the leadership was met with brutal and bloody reprisals. It's believed too that he wished to unite the Soviet Union and make them stronger under his leadership, with no fear of doubting the leader. The term purge was political slang in the Union, meaning an expulsion of members of the political party. In 1933 a purge was ordered of the Communist Party, where 400,000 people lost their memberships. However, as it went on, the word purge became more associated with arrest, imprisonment, execution or being sent to the gulags. Stalin began to plot the downfalls for anyone who dissented against him and the party, and it's believed he was behind the assassination of high-profile Bolshevik leader Sergei Kirov. He was murdered at the party's headquarters, and Stalin following this launched his great purge. He claimed that he had uncovered a dangerous conspiracy of anti-Stalinist communists. He believed that these needed to be expelled, sought out and executed, and he began targeting those who were suspected of being dissenters, and many were shot. Amongst those who were targeted were political leaders, members of the Communist Party, government officials, leaders in the army, and almost anyone with evidence provided against them. It was the NKVD who were the main forces who hunted down people during the Great Purge, and subsequently carried out the arrests, interrogations, torture and execution. Nikolai Yezov had became the head of the NKVD, and it was he who was responsible for the Great Purge. During his time in power it's claimed that up to 75% of the Supreme Soviet were stripped of their positions, imprisoned, sent to the gulags or were executed by firing squads. Show trials took place first in August 1936, in which members of the Communist Party, who were rather senior and were accused of being critical of Stalin's leadership, were brought to trial. The men accused confessed their guiltiness, and they attracted a huge degree of media attention. These trials to the Western world by some were regarded as fair, and Stalin allegedly promised to spare the defendants. However, he broke this promise, and ordered the NKVD to shoot the defendants, and most of their families too. More trials took place, in which many high-profile members of the Soviet Union, including the ousted head of the NKVD, General Yagoda, were brought to trial and then subsequently arrested. Stalin didn't just target political opponents during his Great Purge, it was the everyday people who suffered greatly. Districts were ordered to produce lists of criminals in their areas, and then these were arrested and executed or sent to the gulags. Within society the Orthodox clergy were also targeted, with over 25,000 members arrested. Petty criminals were also executed in barbaric fashion, for example on one Moscow firing range, over 20,000 were executed, with one third being petty criminals. The NKVD asked Stalin to boost the numbers of people they could arrest, and Yezov, the head of the NKVD, 
did this to gain more favour with him. They increased their quotas and more people were rounded up and imprisoned and then subsequently executed. The NKVD also targeted specific nationalities, for example Polish people living within the Union, and they were executed en masse, with allegedly 111,000 executions of them taking place. They made up around 12.5% of the total executions during the Great Purge. This affected a huge amount of the population, and the NKVD went after other nationalities too. The Red Army and military was not without a purge as well. Three of four marshals were removed, along with 13 of 15 army commanders and 8 of 9 admirals. This saw a huge shake-up of the military forces, with many of the most experienced generals executed and killed. 50 out of 57 army corps commanders were purged, along with 154 out of 186 division commanders, and all of the army's commissars were purged. It was believed at the time that up to 50% of the Red Army officers were purged, being forced from their position and sent to hard labour. Many were expelled from the Communist Party, but the number is accepted mostly today as up to around 7%, but the NKVD targeted the leadership heavily, and this would have been felt as the Second World War broke out, with many of the most experienced leaders dead or in prison. Stalin referred to enemies of the people and saboteurs to describe those he wished to seek out. The killing and imprisonment began with political officials, but ended up targeting everyday civilians, peasants, ethnic minorities, artists, scientists and ordinary people. No one was safe, and at the time it was said that everyone feared the knock at the door, in the middle of the night from the NKVD. One of the most brutal elements of the purge was that the families of those convicted of crimes could also be liable for execution, meaning if a father committed a crime, those as young as 12 could be shot for it as well. One of the biggest fear elements was the Gulag labour camps they were sent to. Many people wished they had just been shot rather than face the Gulags, as the imprisonment and labour conditions inside there were like living under constant torture. Many died inside of the Gulags, and it's impossible to estimate how many died because of disease, starvation, overworking and execution that occurred at the camps. The purge targeted much of the well-educated class within the Soviet Union, for example, teachers, writers and academics were targeted heavily, changing the landscape of culture in the Soviet Union. Most of the executions followed in the same way and were done with ruthless efficiency. The executions were carried out by a firing squad or by a single executioner armed with a gun or a pistol. A prisoner would be brought into interrogation and then questioned heavily about their accused anti-Stalin beliefs or activities. If they denied anything, then usually torture was applied in a number of different ways. The interrogators often beat prisoners black and blue, trying to get them to submit, and they would often utilise other torture methods as well. After this, the accused would then be given an ultimatum, confess, or your family will be brought in for torture, and then executed, and this threat often contained the death of the accused's children. Because of this, the accused would then often confess to anything, and the death sentence would be carried out. Many local headquarters of the NKVD had execution chambers built inside of them, and these were used very regularly. Many of them had been built in a specific way, ordered by Yezov, to carry out as many executions as quickly as possible. For example, they had sloped floors and running water, meaning that quickly after an execution had taken place, the cell could be cleaned down, and then the next death could take place quickly. Executioners during the Great Purge were known for ruthless efficiency, and also it was firing squads of the NKVD who carried out the sentences too. The NKVD were the ones who were responsible for doing Stalin's bidding and carrying out the executions. The last stage of the Great Terror or Purge, however, focused on the NKVD itself. Stalin wanted to make sure that those who knew too much about the Purge would also be killed to protect himself further. He announced that fascist elements had taken over the security forces, which resulted in innocent people being executed. Because of this, he appointed Lavrenti Beria as the new head of the secret police at the expense of Nikolai Yezov, who too was later killed. Beria himself orchestrated the former head of the NKVD Yezov's execution and downfall. The legacy of the Great Purge was a devastating one. Stalin's acts of terror and torture forced the Soviet people into submission and he eliminated large amounts of the population. It was a clear message to anyone in the Soviet Union to display nothing but utmost loyalty to him, and to not think anything other than the fact he was a hero and was doing the right things. It made his people dependent on the state and upon him, 
and despite the barbaric tactics, it helped him to solidify his strength. By eliminating any possible dissenters, it limited opposition to him, even if it's considered today that a large amount of the victims were in fact innocent. People inside of the Union were even convinced to accuse their neighbours of dissent and to inform the NKVD, and with this huge numbers of people found themselves accused. It was what Stalin wanted, absolute control instilled by a reign of terror and backed up by a brutal secret police who would carry out his wishes. The official numbers of executions during the purge remain debatable. It's estimated that it's between 950,000 and 1.2 million of those who were executed and died in the gulags because of their treatment. Some estimates even say that the number of dead members of society was around 7 million. However, it's mostly believed today to have resulted in the deaths of around 1.2 million people. Many of the victims were buried in huge mass graves near to the firing ranges and sites of execution, and still today huge mass graves dating back to the Great Purge are being unearthed. There are still so many stories from the Great Purge that haven't been told, with thousands of unnamed members of the Soviet population buried under the ground, the victims of the NKVD's brutal execution squads. Once again, thanks for watching. To support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. And once again, thank you so much for watching.